dear students in this video we will have a detailed discussion on the wave function and its physical significance what are the requirements of a well behaved function and what are normalized and orthogonal wave functions in the introduction class we saw that in quantum mechanics an electron is treated as a standing wave and it is represented using a wave function that is xi so in quantum mechanics each particle is represented by a wave function xi which depends on the position coordinates x y and z and time the wave function is a complex function and it is merely the amplitude of the matter wave here you can see the graphical representation of an electron wave and xi merely represents the amplitude that is the distance from the resting position to the peak position so that is denoted by xi which is the amplitude function such a wave function xi which merely represents the amplitude has no physical reality but if you take the product of the wave function to be more precise the square of the wave function xi square so that represents the probability of finding the particle within a small volume of space such an interpretation of the wave function was given by max born and hence uh, it's known as born's interpretation of the wave function so according to max born the square of the wave function xi square represents the probability of finding the particle within a small volume of space so only xi square has any physical significance the probability of finding a particle within an infinitesimal volume element d tau equals dx dy dz where x y and z are the coordinates so dx dy dz represents the volume space so that is proportional to xi star xi d tau so which we can represent as xi square is equal to xi star into xi where xi square is known as the probability density why the term density because the probability is multiplied by the volume d tau equals dx dy dz and hence xi square is known as the probability density and xi is known as the probability amplitude xi star represents the complex conjugate because xi is a complex function so xi star represents the complex conjugate so if xi equals a plus ib which is a complex function then the conjugate will be xi star is equal to a minus ib so what will be the product of xi into xi star so xi into xi star is equal to a plus ib into a minus ib so that is equal to a square minus i square b square the value of i square is minus 1 so that is equal to a square plus b square which is a real quantity so xi star into xi can be written as xi square which is equal to a square plus b square the product is also real So this is a graphical representation of the probability density. So these peak positions represents the maximum value of xi square. That is, the particle has the maximum probability here, where the value of xi square is maximum. Whereas at the center position, the particle has zero probability at this region because the value of xi square is zero. so when we speak of the physical significance of the wave function xi the wave function merely represents the amplitude function and hence it has no physical significance but the real significance of xi lies in the fact that the product of xi that is xi square which is the probability density which represents the probability of finding a particle within a small volume space such an interpretation was given by max born and hence it's also known as born's interpretation of the wave function 
in order for a wave function to be acceptable it should meet certain conditions such a wave function is called a well behaved wave function so let's see what are the conditions that a wave function must meet in order to be acceptable the first condition is that the wave function psi has to be single valued that is at any given point it can have only one value in other words multi valued functions are not acceptable this is a graphical representation of a multi valued function consider the function sin inverse x so if x is equal to 0 then sin inverse x will be sin inverse 0 so that will be equal to 0 pi 2 pi etc up to n pi so that means function sin inverse x is multi valued so it's not acceptable the second condition is xi must always remain finite an infinite value of xi at any given point would mean infinite probability of finding the particle at that point which is an absurdity so here you can see that the two lines extend over to infinity that means the value of xi extends to infinity so an invalid wave function so this is here xi is an invalid wave function because the amplitude is going to infinity over a region so psi cannot be infinite at any point so the value of psi must always remain finite the next is xi the wave function and its first derivative must be continuous at all points in space specified for the system the wave function xi and its first derivative that is d xi by dx it should be continuous that is the value of xi must not change abruptly at any point for a slight change in coordinates this is an acceptable wave function for example wave functions of sine and cos here you can see that the wave function is continuous the values are changing only gradually here you can see that xi makes no sudden jumps in its value whereas in these two graphs you can see that the function is not continuous and the last one xi must be quadratically integrable that is integral over all space that is integral xi star xi d tau is a finite real number or we can also say that the function xi has to be normalized or at least normalizable integral minus infinity to plus infinity xi star xi d tau equals 1 this represents the normalization condition so if a function xi satisfies this condition then we can treat xi as an acceptable wave function and if the value is not equal to 1 but if it is equal to a finite number or a real number other than 1 then also we can consider xi as an acceptable function for example let xi equals e raised to minus x square by 2 so integral minus infinity to plus infinity xi star xi dx equals integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus x square by 2 into e raised to minus x square by 2 into dx so that is equal to integral minus infinity to plus infinity e raised to minus x square dx the value of this integral is equal to root pi so here the value is not equal to 1 but it's equal to a finite real number then also we can normalize this by a method we can consider xi as an acceptable function so there are four conditions that a wave function must meet in order to treat it as an acceptable wave function psi so must be single valued it must be finite xi and its first derivative must be continuous and xi must be quadratically integrable that is integral xi star xi d2 should be a finite real number so a function meeting the above requirements is said to be a well behaved function and only such functions can yield physically meaningful results when used in calculations.
Now let's see orthogonality of the wave functions. So consider two wave functions, xi i and xi j, corresponding to the energy values e i and e j respectively. Then if integral xi i psi j d to equal to 0, then we say that the two functions are orthogonal or this is the condition of orthogonality. We saw the normalization condition that is integral xi 1 psi 2 d to equal to 1. So here integral xi i psi j d to equals 0 or you can also represent as integral xi star xi d to equal to 0. So all these represents the condition of orthogonality. Now we can combine both normalization and orthogonal conditions. That is integral xi i psi j d to is equal to 1 if i equals j and equals 0 if i not equal to j. So such wave functions form orthonormal set. Or we can also represent the orthonormality condition as integral xi i psi j d to equals delta i j where this delta is known as Kronecker delta. So delta i j equals 0 if i not equal to j and that is equal to 1 if i equals j. So in this video we have seen the physical significance of the wave function about probability density, what are the conditions for a well behaved wave function and what are normalized and orthogonal wave functions.